Hey guys and welcome back to another video. I've wanted to make this video for a very long time but just haven't had the uh, energy to make it. This is a video to compare the B58TU1 with the B58TU2 and reveal or discuss some of the differences. So this is not going to be a comprehensive video, it's going to be a multi-part video. This is part one and hopefully we get through many interesting differences and it doesn't become too boring. Okay, to start off the video, just to mention that the B58 was launched in 2016. The first generation B58 is also known as the B58 B30A and the BMW designation is B58 B30M0. The B58 first generation was followed in 2019 with the B58 TU, the second generation B58. Now we will have to call it the B58 TU1 or technical update 1. That B58 came in two versions, the B58 B30B, also known as the B58 B30 01. That one produced 382 horsepower and then there was the B58 B30C or the B58 B30 M1 and that one produced 335 horsepower. These, uh, these two versions were both found in the Supra as well. And now we have the third generation B58, which is the B58 B30 M2. This one appears to be a further evolution of the B58 B30 M1. Now to call this engine an evolution of a previous engine is, uh, is not doing it justice. It is basically a redesign of the B58. It is just astounding how many differences there actually are between the B58 B30 M1 and the B58 B30 M2. So the B58 B30 M1, we'll just call it B58 TU1 going forward. And the B58 B30 M2, we'll just call it B58 TU2. So we've got the image of the two engines up front already and immediately there are differences the first thing I want to highlight is the charge pipe. The, the charge pipe was round in diameter on the B58 first generation. Then it became a sort of flattened on the B58 TU or the B58 TU1. And now it's back to being round on the B58 TU2. I know some of you will probably ask me about the diameter of the charge pipe and whether this is greater than the diameter of the charge pipe of the B58, the first generation B58, but currently I don't have that information. We can also see the orientation of the throttle body, but the uh, main thing I want to highlight and do not want to actually discuss further in this video is that the alternator, there's no alternator. So please, uh, let's look at the belt drive. Let's look at the components which are visible. You can obviously see the water pump. You can see the air condition compressor. You can see the tensioners, the crankshaft vibration damper, but you, there is no alternator. It doesn't go to an alternator. So we will discuss this further in a future video, but for the time being, I'm just highlighting this as the second main difference. The intercooler is what cools your charge air before it goes into the combustion chambers. Comparing the B58TU1 and the B58TU2 intercoolers side by side, we can see that they are approximately the same width. The heat exchanger itself is of a greater height, but of a shorter length. It is obviously no longer covered in plastic. Here are more images of the intercooler and we can see that it is very similar in appearance to the S58 intercooler in that the heat exchanger, the metallic part of this uh, component is no longer encased in plastic. It has been hypothesized by other YouTubers that perhaps the reason this was done is to dissipate heat and uh, assist the intercooler in cooling down the charge air. However, I believe this is more to do with packaging and weight savings. The new intercooler is about 400 grams lighter than the previous intercooler and it is also more compact. It allows extra space behind the intercooler for additional components and here we can see a shutoff valve. The presence of this shutoff valve, uh, this intercooler shutoff valve here, is to do with the heat management module changes, which I will discuss in a few minutes, but I believe it's to do with packaging. It is a more compact and less heavy component now, and I do not believe it has to do with dissipating heat. Although the intercooler for the B58 appears similar to the S58 intercooler, 
I just want to point out that the S58 intercooler is not the same part number. The heat exchanger element is longer on the S58. So probably the S58's heat exchanger is more efficient and able to cool down the charger further because there will be more coolant flowing through that heat exchanger. And in addition, I want to point out that the heat exchanger is located centrally between the cylinders on the S58, whereas on the B58, it is closer to cylinders one to four. The airflow through the heat exchanger is obviously something BMW engineers will have spent a long time on. Because the heat exchanger is closer to cylinders one to four, there would have been some propensity for the air to flow through cylinders one through four and not so much through cylinders five and six. Obviously, the engineers would have spent a long time on this. One additional point about the intercooler is that the outlet into the cylinders is, is not round. The gaskets are not circular, they're not round. The gaskets for the B58TU2 are pentagonal. They've got this pentagonal shape. We can also see some of the other changes here in this uh, video taken by someone else. We can see the EVAP lines moved to a new position, more forward in the engine bay. We can see the oil filter cap prominently visible now in the engine bay, more easily accessible. We can also see wiring harnesses that have been encased in some protective plastic. For some reason, I must admit, I don't know the reason why these uh, have been encased in this plastic in this way. They're just fancy versions of previous harnesses. It is possible this is to affect the vibration, the harmonics of the engine. Maybe there was some resonance issue that they had to resolve or potentially is to improve the packaging of the engine. Obviously another major change that has already been highlighted by several others is the fact that there's port injection now. This is the low pressure fuel system. This is done by BMW to improve fuel efficiency and clean up the emissions of the engine and increase performance may be a byproduct of the efficiency gains that have been introduced. So if we look at the short engine diagrams next to each other, we're comparing a little bit apples with oranges here because the diagram for the B58TU2 doesn't show the water pump, it doesn't show the heat management module, etc. We can immediately see that the cylinder head cover is completely different in appearance. We can also see that the intake ports are round in the B58TU1, but they are pentagonal in shape, much like the uh, intercooler on the B58TU2. The next thing I want to discuss is that there is a completely different heat management module. The B58 engine features multiple cooling circuits and has multiple cooling modes. The management of the cooling of the engine is via the heat management module. This was a very important component introduced on the B58 engine in 2016. We can see that on the B58TU2, the complexity of the heat management module has been reduced. Certainly the size of the component has become smaller. Very likely the management of the cooling modes and the cooling circuits is now assisted by various other components such as the shutoff valve we saw earlier near to the intercooler. Therefore, overall, the engine must have increased in complexity compared to the B58TU1. Now let's have a quick look at the turbocharger. They're both considered two port engines in that the exhaust manifold is integrated into the cylinder head in both engines. However, if we look at the turbochargers closely, we'll notice that there's a gigantic difference in the wastegate valve in its, uh, in its shape. And more importantly, there is a blowout valve now. The high pressure fuel pump is an off the shelf component. We find it in other engines. It is not an exclusive new part for this engine, which is surprising. As for the fuel injectors, they appear to be a standard that is used on other BMW engines, less powerful engines than the B58, for example, the B38C. Okay guys, that's it for today. This was just the first part, a first look at the B58TU2. I hope you learned something and there will be further videos on the B58TU2 but I'm a busy guy, and so I will get to it as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.